welcome to another exciting episode of the Kemetic How-To Guide for Egyptian Pagan and Kemetic Practitioners. I'm your host, Sharon. First off, uh, it's great to be doing another How-To Guide episode, and uh, thanks to some lovely feedback from some of my viewers, uh, what, we're, what I'm planning to do is set up a Patreon account, and we'll have a new Kemetic How-To Guide episode once a month. And then uh, through the rest of the month, we'll have a couple of Kemetic Bites, and I'm hoping to start uh, a new little segment, and uh, you'll get to talk to my lo lovely husband, Darren, and uh, maybe a few other folks, and um, we can kind of discuss interfaith questions, because we've had a few of those. But for right now, this topic is something that I've been waiting to do for a couple of years, actually. Uh, hopefully I'm getting your name correctly. Um, Amore Soli and Zelza, two different YouTube users who both asked about dealing with negative energy. And I've been wanting to get to this for a while, but negative energy comes in all forms, so... <laughs> uh, hopefully we can finally get to it now. So, I have dealt with psychic attacks and things like that on various occasions, and this episode, what I'll do is tell you about doing your own psychic self-defense. So, let's get ready. First of all, I have to note that uh, in my younger years, I assume that if you get negative energy or a psychic attack, then you must have been messing with things you shouldn't have, you know, and you kind of brought it on yourself. Sometimes that's true. People who are exploring the psychic realm for the, the first time, uh, who aren't very experienced, who aren't using the proper precautions, um, or who keep bad company, can open some very dangerous doorways. Funny thing is, age does not necessarily equal experience. My own mother hooked up with a guy who was not much older than I was at the time, and he was doing a lot of dark stuff, and she started dabbling in this too, and uh, started having all sorts of weird things happen to her. Funny thing is, at that point in time, in 1997 or so, she was only a couple of years older than I am now, which is kind of surreal to think about it, but uh, she started having like weird nightmares, waking up and feeling like, you know, the, all, all the energy had been sucked out of the room and there was this presence that was pressing down on her and you know, all sorts of stuff like that, walking through the woods and suddenly feeling like she was somewhere else. And, and we told her, look, put the crystals away, put the grimoires away, you're, you don't realize what you're getting into, you need to stop. And um, first of all, let me clarify because a lot of you guys are going, well, hey, I have keep a grimoire, I use crystals. There's nothing wrong with those in and of themselves, but if you don't know what you're doing, again, you can open a doorway and not know what's coming through it. And that's what happened with her. Funny thing is, that bad experience um, early on gave, ironically enough, it gave me a, a, a bad taste for paganism in general, and it was 10 years before I was finally able to uh, meet other pagans that were not, you know, um, shadow chasers, what I like to call them, and, you know, uh, realize that, okay, some of these folks are okay, kind of can get into it, and, you know, that led me to where I am now. So, uh, that's, you know, one way that you can have, you know, psychic energy kind of bite you in the butt. That being said, you can also be doing all the good in the world for yourself and still get attacked by unknown entities. It can be from other people or it can be from things that are completely non-human. And in those cases, it's not your fault. You know, um, there are beings in both the human and the spirit realm that their sole purpose in life is to oppose positive gain. And these things are called by different names and different cultures and different traditions, but they all share the common trait of wanting to impede our personal growth. So sometimes things can happen and it's not your fault. Uh, I was 
telling my husband about this topic and one thing he wanted to add is remember destruction is the only force that does not insist on balance only totality so that's our wisdom from the Jedi Master now there are some things that you can do to protect yourself and all of the forward progress that you make in your own path and there are four steps to this so step number one nurture your physical self for one get plenty of rest because when you're physically exhausted that leaves your walls down and it leaves you vulnerable to attack remember if you're too tired to be able to concentrate and think about mundane things you're gonna have a hard time keeping your walls up and protecting yourself from negativity another thing eat nourishing foods uh, good foods help you to ground and um, there are no vegans in our household uh, meat is definitely something that helps you ground for those of you that are vegetarian or vegan um, this might be a good thing to discuss what are some other things that can ground you um, because if you're uh, hungry or if you haven't had enough of the right kinds of foods your your energy level is going to be you know you're, you're not going to be able to find your feet on the ground spiritually speaking another thing use good hygiene there's a reason why it is called ritual purity and that is why we talked about ritual illustrations in a previous episode and stuff like that it's all there for a reason it's not just you know an extra step for you know the sake of being a better reconstructionist there you know it's part of the spiritual process two cleanse your physical surroundings for one try to eliminate clutter you can kind of use some principles of feng shui to do this um, it helps if you can manage not to have things under your bed that's great of course I realize that you know uh, sometimes for space you know you've got to store things under there but the less clutter you have physically the the better that <clears throat> allows energy to flow and uh, not get bunched up another thing keep closet doors closed because an open closet is basically an open portal and uh, another thing to a little bit of an anecdote here the house that I lived in as a teenager um, was it, it basically had a, a psychic amplifier in one end of the house the end that I happen to get stuck in because you had a window facing a closet with a mirror on the doors and then on the other side of that was the bathroom that had two mirrors facing each other that's another bad thing when you have two mirrors that are facing each other and you've got those infinite reflections in there that's like you know a, a, a lightning rod psychically um, that was one thing um, if you happen to watch uh, Star Wars Episode 8 and when you saw where Rey was training and she went in that that space that had the infinite reflections that's like you know some that was one bit of legitimate uh, psychic you know spiritual uh, wisdom you know th this this was a weird place that she was in and not necessarily a good one well we had that in my house and then on the other side of that was my room that had another window facing a closet door with a mirror on it the thing is you have all of those lined up you have portal 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 it was miserable and it was no wonder that my brother and I who lived at opposite ends of this tended to have nightmares all the freaking time because you know we were sleeping in a lightning rod you know again spiritually speaking so pay attention to those kinds of things don't put your know, mirrors facing each other don't leave closet doors open if you can help it uh, one thing if you happen to have a closet that has a door that you can't close one thing you can do is if you've got a big cardboard cutout of you know maybe one of your favorite characters or something like that put that in front of it because that actually um, can serve as a really good block you know um, in in lieu of a door another thing get rid of stagnant water water is a cleanser but if it's allowed to stand and get dirty and start to smell bad then guess what it's been rendered impure and you know it will have the opposite effect and it can start collecting you know bad vibes uh, don't leave water standing for longer than 24 hours if you can help it 
And of course, if you do a ritual lustration, take that water and dump it out um, in a sink or on the ground. Don't dump it on plants because uh, that can kill them. Because uh, I've done that. Also, pay attention to smells. Because for the ancients, a uh, good smell you know, w was something divine. You know, And if you remember in the Egyptian language, uh, senecher is the word for incense, but uh, in general, and it means to make divine. On the flip side of that, a bad smell can be an indication of something nasty and uh, heralding evil. Another way to cleanse your physical surroundings? Sweep. No, not that sweep. That sweep. Use that besom for what it's for. Sweep out negative energies along with the dust. Imagine yourself, you're sweeping out all the bad things when you're sweeping stuff out the door. And uh, I'll share a superstition that a, a friend of mine had that um, he said, oh, you're sweeping all your luck out the door. I think that's if you're using your front door. Um, but this was sweeping out the carport door, so, you know, um, I take that with a grain of salt. Now, speaking of salt, our third technique, our set of techniques, is purifying your spiritual surroundings. And one of the simplest things you can do, and us comedics are very much into this, is using natron or even just basic salt. And... I got a nice little salt holder for mine. And what you can do is cast it at your thresholds. And as you do so, state your intentions, you know, and call upon the deities of your choice. You know, in the name of so and so, I cleanse this threshold. You know, I, I cast out negativity. You know, make sure you're you're announcing your intentions as you do this. And, um, you know, there was one time we didn't have any actual natron, but we had some table salt and baking soda, and we just kind of mixed that together and used it to cleanse my brother's apartment. Another thing that uh, I'm very much a, a believer in is smudging. Now, uh, I picked up this little book at a powwow. I don't even know if you can get it online. And it is called Sage and Smudge, Secrets of Clearing Your Personal Space by Donna Stellhorn. And it's a very short book, but uh, smudging is something that came to us from the Native Americans, and it's related to the use of incense, but you're burning herbs uh, for the purpose of blessing and purifying. And um, certain herbs have certain properties. White sage is a calming and purifying agent, and uh, I have... I'm don't have very much of it left, but uh, I was fortunate enough to buy some white sage uh, from a Native American gentleman who got his from Wounded Knee, South Dakota. And so uh, I save that for special occasions. Another thing you can use is juniper. That is something that attracts positivity and it's a protective uh, plant. And juniper, you can find, you know, juniper trees and juniper bushes, you know, fairly commonly. Another thing that I like to use personally is cinnamon. Cinnamon for me is purifying and uh, I think of it as my GTFO uh, herb. You burn a quill of cinnamon and uh, you know tell things to you know get out and uh, it has a wonderful you know calming effect. So um, if you happen to smudge and you feel sleepy afterwards, good job. You have cleansed and calmed your surroundings successfully, and now you can go to sleep. And this is especially good for people who, you know, um, have trouble, you know, if you're bothered by something in the night, you know, you wake up with a nightmare or whatever, smudge and uh, cast some natron, and you'll be able to go back to sleep. Another thing you can do is, if you have one, bring a sistrum. That's what they're for. Sistrums are meant to chase away negativity. And this is one that I handmade, but, you know, there's a lot of different kinds, you know, that are uh, available online. Um, if I can find the right materials, I'll put some more in my Etsy store. If you don't have a Sistrum, another thing you can do is ring a bell. Um, or, if you are absolutely stuck, another thing you can do is just clap your hands. What's interesting is if you do it like that, um, those of you who might be into anime 
you know, or have paid attention to something like that, uh, uh, the Japanese, when they go to a Shinto shrine, sometimes they'll clap twice, and that's, uh, I believe that's called Kashiwade. And uh, it's meant to, you know, call the, the spirit in the shrine, but uh, you can also use it to, you know, chase out something that's unwelcome, you know, and, and you'll feel it if, if, you know, you do that, it, it sends out like a, a, a wave, and if you use that to tell things go away, then, you know, uh, that's a good technique you can use. Now, the last thing that I'm going to tell you about, and I alluded to this earlier, is to build your walls. Some of us naturally have very thick walls, and a lot of people that don't believe in spirits, who, you know, uh, don't have any interest in spiritual things, it's actually because they have walls that are so thick they can't hear anything. And that can be pretty good for them, but some of us don't have that. Um, I happen to be really good at it, but... Uh, uh, my husband isn't so much, and so I ended up being protection for him. And, you know, sometimes if you've got a partner, that's something, you know, you'll, it, you know, if you can compliment each other, you know, then, hey, that's, that's great. But uh, things you can do to work on that. To start, try to reduce the stress in your life. Pray, meditate, do things to chill out, whatever it is that helps you to feel better, because... Your emotional self and your, you know, mental self, that's, that's going to have a link and, and an effect on your, your spiritual being. Another thing, explore your faith, whatever it is, be it comedic or something else. Your gods will protect you if you call on them in sincerity. Now, as for techniques in the astral, if you will, um... One thing you can do is just visualize an energy field around yourself. You know, um, picture it as being like a, a bubble or a sphere that's completely impenetrable. You know, you're putting up a force field. Just put that in your mind. You are putting up a force field, and that will help you to put out your walls. Imagine, you know, nothing can get through that force field. It is Im impenetrable unless you give it permission. That's the thing. You have to... Assert yourself and say, okay, nothing is going to get in here. You're not coming in unless I let you. Yeah. So take, take that, that charge of yourself and your sphere. And if you find yourself feeling kind of spent and you need an energy source, uh, one good way to do it, and especially if you're a comedic, this, this works really well, visualize a beautiful sunny day. Put some detail in this. Where are you right now? What time of the day is it? Are there any clouds or is it completely clear? Now in your mind, look up at the sun. Imagine that your personal god or goddess is in the sun, pouring out brilliant energy without limit. Now take that energy in. Just It's sunlight. It's there. It's unlimited. It's yours for the taking. Just soak it in and recharge. Offer a prayer of thanks to them. If you're tired, go to sleep. You'll wake up feeling recharged. So, those are some very basic techniques that will serve you well regardless of what tradition you follow. Now there are more advanced techniques beyond that, but they're all based on these very simple beginnings. And these are some basic tricks that I've shown you that can help you to, you know, protect yourself and, you know, be able to hopefully explore without, you know, doing the psychic equivalent of walking out into traffic. And that's another reason why, um, as you start to learn more about the uh, spiritual techniques, you know, and building altars and, you know, some of the things that are done in a variety of traditions, not just pagan, but uh, even, you know, like the Buddhist tradition that I was part of at one point, some of the things that they did, you know, when you think about it from a, a psychic standpoint, it made sense. You're creating a, a sacred space that nothing can get into. And, you know, only the entities that are being invoked and that are being worshipped are in that space. And, you know, um, 
it all starts with these, these basic little building blocks. So remember, don't take any unnecessary risks, obviously, but don't let negativity bother you. You know, um, take your path into your own hands and say, you know, I'm not going to let these things bother me. So hopefully these things will help you to keep yourself well. One other thing before we go, I have a whole stack here of newsletters. The newsletter Horizon. Let's see if you can see it. It's every issue from last year up until now. And those of you that PayPal'd me over the last month or two, I need to get your addresses so I can send you one of these. And also, I've made enough of them by now that I know exactly how much it costs to print them and how much to mail them. So hopefully I'll be able to figure out what the subscription rate would be. It's a quarterly newsletter, so four times a year. As soon as I have that um, and get in contact with some of you guys, we can make this, you know, an ongoing thing and you can get some. So, for the Cometic How-To Guide, this is Sharon wishing you Synapti. Enjoyed this video? Then be sure to hit like and subscribe to the Cometic Independent channel. You can also buy my books on lulu.com, shop handmade pagan supplies in my Etsy store, and get your official Cometic Independent gear on Zazzle. Go ahead and hit pause for the links. You can even rewind and watch this video again.